Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on Galactorrhea. Galactorrhea us when there is lactation occurring in non-breastfeeding females. It is always pathological if in males. The associated conditions are hyperprolactinemia, or idiopathic. It can be due to liver disease or hypogonadism. The causes of galactorrhea can be divided into physiological, pharmacological, and pathological. Physiological causes include exercise, pregnancy, puerperium, abnormal sleep pattern, or nipple stimulation. Pharmacological causes include dopamine antagonists, such as antipsychotics or metoclopramide, H2 antagonist, methyl dopa and others. Pathological causes include prolactin secreting pituitary adenoma, pituitary stock compression, chest wall stimulation, hypogonadism, and other less common causes. For general mechanism, prolactin stimulates breast and milk gland development, together with oxytocin, and stimulate lactation in the postpartum period. Estrogen and progesterone are also needed for breast development. Normally, prolactin is tonically inhibited by dopamine, which is persistently secreted by the arcuate nucleus. The dopamine travels down the pituitary stalk on the tuberoinfundibular axis and stops cells in the anterior pituitary from producing prolactin. Therefore, hyperprolactinemia and galactorrhea may be caused by excess prolactin secretion, disruption of the normal inhibitory process of dopamine, or failed excretion of prolactin. For pharmaceutical mechanism, the galactorrhea caused by commonly used antipsychotics and antinausea drugs, such as metoclopramide, is due to blocking of dopamine. This causes the inhibitory effect of dopamine on prolactin to be reduced, producing hyperprolactinemia. So higher prolactin, causing lactation. Other medications can also cause galactorrhea. Methyl dopa depletes dopamine stores, and competitively inhibits levodopa conversion to dopamine, thereby reducing dopamine and inhibition of prolactin. Verapamil directly stimulates lactotrophs, producing more prolactin. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors increase the level of serotonin available, which has a stimulating effect on prolactin secretion. Next we look at the pathological causes, such as prolactinoma. Prolactinomas are a type of pituitary adenoma, a neoplastic growth of pituitary lactotroph tissue. Prolactinomas secrete prolactin in large quantities, and are not effectively inhibited by normal levels of dopamine. So in this case, there is too much prolactin, causing galactorrhea. Next is pituitary stock compression. This can occur due to causes such as craniopharyngioma, trauma, or pituitary adenoma. This disrupts or destroys the normal tuberoinfundibular pathway that allows dopamine to travel from the arcuate nucleus, via the portal circulation, to the lactotrophs to inhibit prolactin secretion. So in this case, less inhibition of prolactin secretion. Hence, higher prolactin levels again. Another cause is hypothyroidism. In hypothyroidism, thyrotrophin-releasing hormone is elevated as a compensatory response to low thyroxine. TRH is a potent prolactin-releasing factor. So prolactin levels increase. Chest wall stimulation, due to breast surgery, mechanical trauma, or herpes zoster, can produce a neurogenic reflex to stimulate the production of prolactin via the suppression of dopamine. It is thought that stimuli are passed via the intercostal nerves to the posterior column of the spinal cord, to the brainstem, and then the hypothalamus, where dopamine secretion is decreased. So less inhibition on prolactin. So higher prolactin levels. In cases of acromegaly, hyperprolactinemia and galactorrhea may result from either mass effect of the pituitary adenoma causing stock compression, or excess growth hormone that has a stimulatory effect on prolactin. Or in very rare cases, a pituitary adenoma may produce both growth hormone and prolactin. In renal failure, there is reduced clearance of prolactin. So it all comes down to high prolactin levels, causing galactorrhea. For sign value, galactorrhea in any male, and in a non-breastfeeding female, requires attention. It is a non-specific sign that, if present, requires a thorough history and examination to find more localizing signs. Galactorrhea will occur in a majority of women with prolactinomas but is much less common in males. 13% of patients with acromegaly may display galactorrhea, and 10% of patients with primary hypothyroidism will have high levels of prolactin. Less than 10% of cases of galactorrhea are caused by systemic diseases. Take note that drug-induced, idiopathic, physiological, and neoplastic causes are more common. That's all for this video. Thank you.